Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Nihongo Master Podcast. I'm your host Azra and we're going to get artistic today. Well, without the brushes and paint. We're going to draw inspiration from some of the top Japanese artists of today. The land of the rising sun is constantly brewing creativity. If you've seen the famous Great Wave print by Hokusai, you somewhat know that Japanese artists have been around and creating revolutionary works since centuries ago. But the new wave of contemporary artists go beyond traditional woodblock printing and the likes, bringing a new generation of the country's rich artistry. From paintings and sculptures to visual media and perspective photography, these four Japanese artists of today transform Japan's art scene on a global scale. We'll touch on, Takashimura- we'll touch on Takashi Murakami's anime-style crafts, Yayoi Kusama's polka dots, Tatsuo Miyajima's illuminating creations, and Hiroshi Sugamoto's refreshing captures. Keep your ears tuned and notebooks ready as we'll be dropping a few related vocabulary words along the way. Let's start painting the beautiful picture of four of Japan's top contemporary artists of our generation. The first contemporary artist on our list has got to be Takashi Murakami, undoubtedly the country's most successful one to this day. I mean, he wouldn't be called the Warhol of Japan if that wasn't the case. This revolutionary artist saw similarities between traditional Japanese painting and Japanese anime, animation, and manga, Japanese comics, creating the now world-famous artistic movement, Super Flat, which refers to the flat, two-dimensional imagery using flat planes of colour. Combine that with popping colour combinations, as well as his intriguing play on compositions, and you get Murakami's iconic aesthetic. Murakami brings Japanese traditional art into the world of popular culture. Despite his extremely modern creations, Murakami has his artistic inspirations, or Eikyo in Japanese, rooted in cultural theories that are based on Japanese subcultures. He takes elements that are considered low and repackage them as high. His collaborations, particularly with Louis Vuitton to produce fashion accessories, and other activities like the auction of a fiberglass sculpture called Miss Coco for 567,500 US dollars, the highest price for a Japanese artist, has earned him celebrity status. And to top it all off, Murakami proves himself to be quite the influence in the art scene when he opens up his own art production Kaisha, to mean company, called Kai Kai Kiki Co Limited. This company provides a platform for up-and-coming artists to get international exposure through exhibitions, selling merchandise and art festivals, or matsuri in Japanese, in both Japan and in the US. Takashi Murakami is not only a groundbreaking force in the art world, but he's also using his influence to help others. In this day and age where the arts industry is not really looked at as equal as others, Murakami is sparking hope for the future. Here's a quick vocab recap. Eikyo, inspiration or influence. Kaisha, company. Matsuri, festival. Our next Japanese artist is just as influential. When you hear the name Yayoi Kusama, you automatically think of Porukadotto, polka dot print. That's when you know she's the real deal. In the span of seven decades, Kusama has explored multiple mediums including, but not limited to, painting, sculpture, installation, film, and fashion. From dots obsessions paintings to walk-in installations of rooms covered entirely with colourful dots and mirrors, it's safe to say that's her trademark. This Matsumoto-born artist described herself as an obsessional artist. I don't know about you, but I can definitely see why. Her earlier works, Infinity Net, were full of repeated tiny marks on large canvases. While Murakami embraces 2D, Kusama is all about infinity, and she began venturing to physical and psychological boundaries. One of her adventures led her to paint tiny dots on participants' body near New York's Museum of Modern Art. Started out minimalist, but eventually moved on towards a full-on pop art and avant-garde. When Kusama moved back to Japan from New York, she continued exploring various mediums, with her obsessional artistic style, of course. Eventually, she opened up a Hatsubutsukan, or museum, to showcase her works, near to her home and, oh, the psychiatric hospital that she used to live in. Yet I mentioned that she was admitted to a mental hospital before. She went there on her own choice. It was then that she wrote a couple of literary works that were just as revolutionary as her polka dots. You'll definitely see a few of her works around Japan if you're ever here. But if you're a big Kusama fan, an art island called Naoshima has a sculpture, or Chokoku in Japanese, of the 1994 polka-dotted yellow pumpkin. Let's quickly recap the vocab. Porukadotto, polka dot. Hatsubutsukan, museum. Chokoku, sculpture. By the way, 
If you haven't checked out our official website yet, why not give it a browse? At Nihongo Master, we offer efficient Japanese lessons that are quick, easy, and fun for Japanese language learners of all levels, from beginners to advanced. Our smart tools will assist you in areas where you need a little bit of a push and congratulate you on the ones you waste. With a community of over 50,000 Japanese students, you're not alone on your learning journey. Make new friends and improve together with our point system, collecting points as you go along. Ask away any questions you have on our group discussion pages. There's sure to be others as well as our Japanese instructors that are quick to answer. You can also take Nihongo Master with you on the go and learn Japanese as you trot the globe. Practical, right? If you've been to Japan during winter, you'd realize that the country's huge on illuminations. One of Japan's foremost sculptor and installation artists, Tatsuo Miyajima, literally lights up the Japanese art scene. Unlike the previous two artists who are more of paintings and prints, Miyajima uses materials like electric circuits, videos, computers, and other gadgets, as he would call it, in his works, bringing technology, or gijutsu in Japanese, into the world of traditional art. I don't know about you, but I'm a huge sucker for light illuminations, so it goes without saying that I'm a huge fan of the works of this contemporary artist. But that's the thing, Miyajima's works aren't just about the light. There's a whole concept behind it. He's inspired by the Buddhist teachings and humanist ideas which brought about his core artistic concepts. Keep changing, connect with all, and goes on forever. Miyajima uses LED number counters that flash in cycles from 1 to 9 repeatedly and continuously, skipping the finality of zero. Zero never appears in his work. This signifies the journey from Seikatsu, life, to Shi, death, but never reaching the end, ever. Kind of like saying, life and death are constantly repeating. It's all about connectivity, continuity, and eternity. Miyajima's works have been presented in all kinds of structures, grids and towers, using simple to complex counters. Since 2017, Miyajima has devoted himself to social participatory projects. One of them, called Revive Time Kaki Tree Project, involves taking saplings from persimmon trees in Nagasaki that survived the atomic bombings and planting them all over the world. Another one is an ongoing project called Sea of Time Tohoku, where the end goal is to install 3,000 LED counters permanently in the Tohoku region of Japan as a tribute to the souls that were lost in the 2011's Great East Japan earthquake. So it's safe to say that Miyajima's works are more than just a light show. Every single one of them tells a story, and some of them are even movements of their own. Here's a quick vocab recap. Gijutsu Technology Seikatsu Life. Shi. Death. It is also pronounced the same way as the number 4 in Japanese, which is why 4 is considered an unlucky number. They say a picture speaks a thousand words. Well, Hiroshi Sugimoto's works scream a billion. Our final contemporary artist on the list is by far the least. Sugimoto dabbles in a few different mediums including architecture and antiques, but he excels in photography, shashin satsue in Japanese, and videography. Well versed in everything from politics and history to art, his works capture the expression of exposed time. The different series of works each have its own distinct theme, and each one of them is like a capsule of time encompassing series of occurrences. Using long exposures and large format photographs alongside conceptual aspects featured in his works, Sugimoto has caught the attention of many. His first series, Dioramas, in 1976, captured the displays inside a museum and making the fake look real. Polar Bear, from this series, is also the first work to be in public collection, acquired by New York Museum of Modern Art. The same approach of turning Genjutsu, reality, into Fikushon, fiction, was used for the Portrait series in 1999, where he captured wax figures, all looking like they were basically posing for the camera. Sugimoto has other tricks up his sleeve, like capturing a reality and making it look surreal through long exposures like in his 1978 theatre series. For those photography enthusiasts out there, you should definitely check Sugimoto's works out. I don't know much about photography, but even I can appreciate the conceptual thought he put into all of them. Now for a quick vocab recap. Shashin Satsue. Photography. If you want to say photo, it's just shashin. Genjutsu. Reality. It comes from the word jitsu to mean truth. Fikushon, fiction. So now that you've dipped your toe into the world of Japanese contemporary arts through four of the top Japanese artists, what do you think? 
Does Takashi Murakami's take on Japanese traditional arts through manga and anime intrigue you? What about Yayoi Kusama's obsession with polka dots? I know I was definitely roped into the world of light installations with Tatsuo Miyajima's works. And Hiroshi Sugimoto definitely gets me thinking about how reality can be perceived in an infinite amount of ways. We've merely scratched the surface of Japan's contemporary art scene. Head over to the Nihongo Master blog if you're interested in reading up on them some more. And if you're keen on picking up some more Japanese for yourself, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and the official website to learn more. Thank you so much for listening in. Join me in the next one where I'll be walking you down another avenue of Japan's rich culture. Mata ne! Nee.